we are on so we are going to talk about vim day-to-day -day use and how we are going to also use it uh, wh while we are sshing to a server and how easy it is will be to use uh, vim instead of nano or any other text editor and what we are going to work on you you can already see the screen that uh, omer is sharing omer is sharing yep. the readme file and i'm just gonna show you how it looks like when it's uh, on github so this is the file and on the background you can see omer's uh, uh, Omer's screen with a real readme and now Omer will show us a lot of cool stuff that we can do with Vim. So let's begin. Omer. Okay. Um, so throughout the session, I'm going to use a lot of my plugins, my pre-installed plugins. Um, the plugins are in my Git repo. It's public. It's called dot files under my name. It's, um, I'm going to write it down. It's Omer XX at GitHub and dot files and i've got everything mapped under there including plugins and every other I, uh, alias i have inside Vim. so uh, that being said we can start so um this is me going to use one of my uh kind of rare plugins but uh, um since i'm editing a uh, markdown file i want to change how vim addresses that file and i want to see uh, syntax highlighting so i'm going to use one of my plugins and select a file type that says markdown and then have the colorful scheme and see everything uh, so that's a nice thing nice thing to use um so we're going to start by um, editing the basics i'm just going to switch to my text file and the idea is to have a vim day-to-day -day use so I am going to use a lot of plugins, but I'll try to keep it as vanilla as possible in order for you to also be able to use stuff when you log into server, like you said, um, and use it on a vanilla Vim with no special plugins or any other configurations. Um, so just a quick recap about the real basic stuff, which I think are essential. So we're used to uh, using our arrows everywhere. And Vim kind of has a different approach where it maps uh, four keys. You have the JK um, for up and down movement, and you have the L and H for the sides. Um, it's not an easy thing to get used to. I really recommend it because it turns the entire workflow inside Vim to really fast and helpful. But if you don't want that, you can for sure use your arrows and just uh, hang on with that. A cool tip we were talking about last time is being able to map your uh, arrows to, I don't know, kind of dev null inside Vim. So that lets you, um, um, it forces you to use the, the real movement in Vim, the real movement keys. And so another cool. tip that I want to mention that you told me last time is I'm going, and now I'm sharing my, uh, my you know, just my screen with the, uh, Vim Adventures, okay? So mm -hmm. if anyone want to play Vim Adventures to do what Omer just told about us about, you know, playing with the H, J, K, L keys and to get used to them, you can just play with Vim Adventures. We'll also share all of the links that we are talking about over here. We'll also share it uh, in the description of this video. Yeah, yep. move on. That's a cool tip. Um, all right, so another um, last comment about general vim stuff before we start is the modes so the idea is the idea in vim being able to move from any other text editor to vim is understanding the different concept which vim uses um, which is the general use of modes you can see i have a normal mode right now and it's colored in yellow in the bottom of my screen by the way that's a plugin called powerline you can check it out later it helps you really identify the kind of um, mode you're in right now for example i'll change my mode to visual you can see it's changing to orange and that's really comfortable when you are editing a lot and you just want to catch the color with your eye and understand what you're doing so if i catch if i click uh v again for visual i go back to normal mode so normal mode is the basic mode in vim where we do all our movement right if i want to uh, jump through the uh the page or move through um, different words like with B or with E and stuff like that. It's really, um, it's not really, that's the, the only option for us is do it in normal mode. When you wanna edit Omar, stuff- Omar, just one uh, thing. 
regarding the you know you showed us uh, how you show the your your uh, keyboard buttons you know so right. can you just show this screen i don't see your uh, you know how you click on buttons last you time don't see it. okay that's weird because i'm seeing it overlaid on my oh, ah, because right. you're sharing no. only vim yeah ah. probably okay Let's switch the share to my entire screen for just a second. That would be this. So I'm pausing this video for one second. So you'll fix it. And we're back. So, okay. Yeah. You can see my, um, <clears throat> I'm casting my keys down below to the left and I'll try to keep it as uh, visible as possible and do my editing above. So you can see everything I'm doing, um, right below what I'm clicking in order to do it. <clears throat> so. We're talking about modes. So the two most important modes we're going to use throughout not only the session, but usual day-to-day -day work with Vim is the normal mode, which I'm using currently, which allows me to jump up and down, like do the arrow movement, uh, move between words, move between lines, uh, maybe jump around the text, stuff like that. And then the next most useful thing is what we're used to in every other text editor, which is the insert mode, which is basically editing. So when I click I, you can see my mode changes to insert. You won't all have the um, blue insert below, but you will see there is a double hyphen thing with uh, insert in the middle. And that allows you to basically just uh, uh, write down some text and do your editing stuff. And it doesn't matter if it's uh, code or anything else, uh, but this is basically where we enter our uh, raw text, which we're going to uh, edit later. So Vim as a vanilla comes with the uh, escaping normal mode by clicking escape. Um, since I'm using, for example, the Mac Pro with, uh, with a touch bar, escape is not really a comfortable option. And it's kind of a slow option. Uh, when we use Vim, we try to use minimal keystrokes wherever we go, and we try to move our hands as, le as least as possible. So um, moving my hand to escape from the middle of the keyboard is kind of a considered a long path. So I mapped my own keys to, if I'm going back to insert mode, I mapped it to JJ. So when you're going to see a lot of JJ um, when I'm editing, that would be escaping insert mode and going back to normal. So I'm gonna delete this line with DD, which we talked about last time. Um, and we'll start going through. So any questions so far? Or should I go on? Uh, you can proceed. So I say, let's do like we did last time. You know, I'll just ask you to do stuff and you'll show us the magic, okay? So I say we'll start with basic uh, navigation. Okay, that's right. what we're going to start okay. with. So now I can see your cursor. Uh, by the way, just so you'll be aware, Omer, I'm, you know, with my mouse pointer, I'm going to mark where, you know, where you are. Yeah. So, okay. Anyways, now I can see your, uh, your cursor and I want you to jump to requirements. Do it as fast as you can. How are you going to do it? Right. So... Um, like we talked last time, jumping around Vim is basically a set of commands. It's kind of like a programming language. So if I want to go to requirements, I can see that currently I'm in line six. You can see the six next to my cursor and you can see relative numbers kind of grayed out uh, below and above my cursor. So I can see that requirements is uh, seven lines far away, like going down. So if I want to jump seven rows down, I'm just going to click seven and down, which is J. And oh, sorry, <laughs> I missed one. Anyway, um, the number of clicks I want to go and the command. So if I want to go seven up, I'm going to go seven back up and jump around. And the reason um, I missed a line is you can see this one is a long one. So uh, they, these two lines are kind of one. They are both seven. That's why I missed. So if I want to go from here, to requirements, I would go again with five and I'm back right on the line. Um, so Vim has all kinds of movement, movements other than um, like up, down and to the sides, which all can be mapped with a number and how many times I wanna go. For example, uh, 11 to the left, I can go 11 to the left and the same thing to the other side and the same thing with most of Vim commands. I can just type in a number and then the command and it'll do it those uh, X number of times 
I, I told it to. It's very useful when we'll go later to more deep down editing. Um, so <clears throat> a few more useful ones are GG, which goes back to uh, the top of the document. G is uh, kind of a global alias in Vim. <clears throat> it's also useful when you search and replace and do stuff like that. So G is kind of a good thing to remember. Uh, and when I go to the when I want to go to the bottom, it would be Shift G, which is a capital G, and that takes me all the way to the last line. Uh, very useful when I want to go around the text, wrap it with something, check what's going on. Um, <clears throat> that's really useful. By the way, there's a Google Chrome extension that's called Vimium, which lets you use the, if you're already used to these um, shortcuts, it lets you use it on every web page, web, uh, web page you're going through, uh, including K and J and everything else. So that's really comfortable. Um, so for example, let's say I wanna um, select my entire text in inside the document. I wanna, I don't know, do something with it, cut it, um, copy it, whatever. So I wanna go to the top of the screen with a GG, and then I'm gonna use Shift V in order to automatically select my entire line and go to visual mode. So I'm gonna do Shift V, and then I'm gonna scroll back with Shift G to the bottom. Okay, so it was GG, then Shift V to visually mark, and then Shift G uh, to go to the bottom. And I have, now I have, it's like a Control a, I think, right? Or Command A when you use Google Docs. So that's uh, select all. And I can do whatever I want with it. I can delete it with D, which is basically paste in, uh, cut and paste. Um, I can undo what I just did. Um, I can do the same thing and maybe, um, I don't know, copy it with Y, which is yank in Vim. And then if I want to paste it, like the same thing all over again, I would go to the bottom um, with Shift G and then paste. So now I've got the entire thing uh, another time. Okay, not really useful in that constant context, but that's the idea. So that's uh, GG and Shift G. Um, let's start going over uh, movement around words, which is really useful but when you edit So code. first I want to say that it, this is a very good use case if you're connecting to a server and you want to copy the lines of a configuration file or whatever, you know, when you SSH right. and you want to, you know, just vim some config file and then copy everything from it. So now Omer, I want you to show us the magic. I want you to go, let's say, jump to line. Okay, so now, now do it as fast as you can, okay? No teaching. Jump to requirements, okay? Okay, requirements. So instead of going 12 lines down, because I see I have some breaks, I'm gonna just go directly to line, uh, you know, okay, let's do 12 down and I have two breaks, so I go down another two lines. Great, That's now I want you to select all the text, quickly as you okay, can. So the entire line? No, the entire text, like you did, Control A, you know? Just like you did, you know, jump to the, jump uh, to okay. the top. I wanna show the magic, you know, how fast it is. That's yeah, what you G, mean? G, Shift V and then, Shift Shift G G, great. Right. And then how can you copy it? You hit on. Okay, so I can yank it with a Y, and then it's saved into my unnamed register, which means the next time I'm gonna paste something, that's gonna be pasted. Great. The entire thing I just yanked, and I can delete it with D, uh, which is basically the same thing as Y. I mean, saving it, it into an unnamed register, so I can repaste it but actually deletes it away. So if I do the same thing and D, it's gone, okay? But if I paste it, the, the entire same thing is saved into my clipboard and I can paste it. Great. With P. So this is how I would copy a configuration file, you know, super fast. Instead of, you know, because I didn't know how to use Vim earlier, what I did was yeah. a cut, you know, CAT to a file mm -hmm. and then I copied it because if you try to do it with your, um, you know, with your mouse cursor and you try mm -hmm. to, to get all the content from a Vim file, either it takes uh, a lot of time, or you, uh, sometimes if you if you add the row numbers in a server and then you try to copy it with your mouse, it's very annoying because it also copies right. the line numbers. You know, so right. it's a very good use case. You know, like scroll to the top, GG, and then uh, Shift V to visual mode, and then 
shift G to select everything. And right. from there, you just need to hit Y. Okay, that's a yeah. good thing. Now, let's yeah. say again, I always want to, to practice the jumping. Okay, so jump again to requirements. Yeah, so about that. I have a few options here, which is going 12 lines down or just um, How would you uh, go jumping absolute? Around. We talked about relative. How would you go absolute? You know, jump to getting started, so, okay? I don't know, something else. How do you ab go absolute to a line? Yeah, so if I want to go to a direct line now, I have uh, set up my Vim so I don't see each and every line's number. Um, but what you can do if you do have all numbers like listed from one, two, three and not changing relatively according to where you are, you can just, right now I know that requirements is on line 13, right? So it doesn't matter where am I on the screen, I can just uh, use a semicolon um, and go to line 13 and it takes me straight to line 13. Great. Okay, so semicolon and then the line number is absolute reference, you know, jump to a line. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, so that's how you go directly to a line. Um, but another important thing to learn is that Vim is basically text, right? You're using text, you're copying text, you're editing text. So if you want to search for something with a slash command, that would normally be easier if you want to find like a specific thing. So wherever am I, I don't see requirements right now on the screen. I'm somewhere else in the document and you wanted to be to go there. So my, uh, first thought about how to get there would be just to slash requirements right and it would take me directly to the um, next finding of requirements um, something to remember about that requirements is um, it appears only once in the text oh sorry it appears more time okay so let's talk about that um, if i search for something it puts me on the next occurrence of it and I can jump around through the next findings of the same text I was looking for with N and Shift N, right? You can see I'm right now on line 176 and I wanna jump to requirements text below. So I use N, okay? And if I use N again, it goes to the next uh, section where require was found. So that's another useful tool to, uh, to use, okay? Okay, cool. So for me, you know, uh, I like to just Every time I, you're saying something, I like to memorize it. Like okay, so, normal, you know, normal keys is forward and shift plus normal, you know, shift and the normal right. key is back. It's the opposite. Okay, great. And a good thing to remember on Vim, <clears throat> that's usually it's not usually, but sometimes it is useful that everything has an opposite. So if we were talking about finding the next uh, occurrence of something, which is slash, I can use question mark, and question mark is doing the same but backwards. So for example. If the next, uh, right now I'm on line 13 and I looked for require. So clicking N would take me to the next occurrence of requirements, which is line 176, probably because we duplicated the entire thing earlier. So I go back. Um, you know what? No, I go to the next occurrence. If I go next, it takes By the me way, back. requirements is, it actually appears also twice in the repository itself. It's, ah, it's like, yeah, so requirements, you know, generally and requirements for uh, contributing, you know, so that's... Yeah, a, makes sense. So that's another occurrence. Yeah. It's not for us duplicating. Anyway, I can search backwards. So slash is searching forward, like give me the next occurrence down below. Um, or I can search backwards. Now Vim, when it searches for something, it's it's going in circles, right? It won't stop because it got to the last one below. Like if I go all the way down to 206, 209, it goes, uh, the next one goes back up and searches again. Like it's, it's endless, but it always goes forward, like below, down below until the last one and then go back up to the uh, first one. If you're editing something really, really long and you want to search backwards, sometimes it's useful. Uh, you can use the opposite of slash, which is question mark, and search the same thing, like uh, require. And now when I go next, it'll take me one up, because next is searching backwards. And the opposite of that is shift N will actually take me kind of in the right direction. I hope that was somewhat understandable. But everything Give me, has give an me a use case. I want to understand when would I prefer, because right now it looks for me that I would always use normal slash, hit the end button and then shift and why would I use the, you know, when do you right. use this why would question? You use it? Okay, so when you're editing, for example, a really long uh, log file, right? Let's say you've exported a really long log file from whatever tool you're using. And you're right now you're, you're uh, looking at the last line with shift G, which is the 
last thing ever outputted from the tool. And you want to search something that happened not too long ago, right? If it's a log file that takes you three months back and you search for error, that would take you to the next occurrence, but on the top, right? Because you're in the last line. But if I want to search for like, I, usually when you search for an error, you, you want to see something like that happened lately, that happened recently on your application. So when I look for log files, I usually start from the last line, understanding where I am, and then using the question mark to search for, I don't know, error, log, whatever. Um, that's okay. kind yeah, of- Yeah, makes make sense. Sounds like tail. Uh, right, yeah. So tail and then go up. Okay, that's so question mark, I mean, even writing down you're useful for logs. Mm -hmm. uh, searching backwards. Now, Omer, uh, yep. I'm pausing this video for one second. Okay. So, moving on from searches, uh, we're still in the navigation part. Um, we talked about moving around lines, moving around the document. Uh, one thing to note and remember about Vim, like always, not only in terms of navigation, but everywhere. When you want to find stuff, manipulate text, editing, copying, whatever. Uh, Vim has this kind of mantra or concept that's called list keystrokes. List keystrokes. You want to try to do everything you can um, with as, as little keystrokes as you can. For example, jumping between lines or going to the next word or finding something, you always try to work the list. Um, the idea is not only being quick and fast, but it's also not breaking your line of thought. So if you're kind of in the middle of a thought process, you don't want to break it. And getting better at Vim and being like fluent with your movement and editing lets you really uh, keep your thoughts together and maintain a thought process when you're writing code. And it's really, really helpful to being productive. So um, that being said, let's talk about- Now we're going about... to play the jump around game. <laughs> right, jump around game. Oh, and one, <laughs> one more thing to mention, you have a really cool thing that's called Vim Golf. It's kind of uh, web challenges. Um, just Google it, Vim Golf. Vim Golf? Golf. Golf. Yeah. So Vim Golf is kind of a web app that lets you compete against others in, in all kinds of different uh, kind of challenges. It gives you all kinds of snippets of codes and you're trying to jump around, edit or doing whatever they told you. Um, for example, here's 10 lines of a configuration file. They all have HTTPS. Delete all the S from the HTTPS only in lines that have XXX in them, for example. And then you compete against others. And uh, as you get to the least keystrokes possible, I mean, the least keystrokes, the more points you get back. Um, so that's how it works. It's kind of a game. OK, so let's talk about jumping around. OK, um, so I say now you, OK, I'm trying to think about a use case where TTT. OK, so we'll do like, um, we'll mix it let, up let's, with, with a bit Let's recall the, the, the movement inside of a line before we start jumping around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to mix it up with the uh, replacing text. Okay, so for example, okay, what I want to do, my need is to replace, you see this uh, Git repo AWS serverless workshops. So I don't, but because I don't, I will search for a Git yeah, repo. Yeah, this, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is, let's say I'm on the also check line. I'm at the also check line and what I want, you know, the title also check and what also, I want yeah. yeah and what I want to do I want to replace only the link for the git repo AWS serverless workshop so I would like to replace you know the HTTPS github AWS samples uh, serverless workshop blah blah <coughs> this is what yeah. I would like to okay. replace so just one thing about now I searched earlier for git repo because you told me find git repo I didn't know where it was so I searched for it and I jumped to it and now I'm using um, you told me look for also check I didn't see it initially even though it's titled so I jumped next to that one if I want to go back to the last line I would just use um, um, like a double comma. double single quote what is it yeah double single quote right apostrophe that's <laughs> what <laughs> I remember anyway that lets you jump back and forth between your last place so it's kind of a useful 
thing to do if I were somewhere right down here in the project and I did something along those lines and then I'm done and I want to jump back. So I jump back with uh, single ah, quote. It's like twice. undo to your jumping. Uh, something like that. Take me back to the last place I were. For example, if we in Unix, it's kind of, uh, you know, CD back, right? CD hyphen lets you go back to the last location. So that's the same in Vim. Good to know about Unix. Okay. <laughs> same thing. Yeah. Okay. So, so you know, By the way, even Unix, before you, you start yeah. replacing stuff. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Even before that, we'll start about just jumping uh, real quick. Okay. So go to the also check and just jump to the okay go to the also check go so also check is already marked because it's the last thing i've checked i see it's highlighted so i'm gonna go with n which will take me to the next finding which is also yeah ah okay great now go to the end of the current word which you are which is also so it will, you're so supposed to e jump takes me to the end of the word okay so e goes to the end of the word now if you are on the l character it will still yeah. go to the end of the word right right it always goes to the end of the next word. So if I'm, the, if I'm somewhere in the middle and I go to the end, that's the end of the current word. But if I'm in the end of the current word, A, E would take me to the next end. Right? Okay. To the next word, to the next end of it. And if I want to go back, I use B. And that takes me to the kind of beginning. That's how I remember it. So jumping between ends and jumping between beginnings. Um, and if I want to jump from here to check, but I want to go to the actual word and doing something with it, not to the end of it, I'll use word, which is W. And that will take me to the beginning of it. So wait, recap, E goes to the end. Okay, <clears throat> so go, go, go back to the, the beginning end. of also, and then you'll start jumping. Yeah, so it, w whenever I go to the um, beginning of the line, not for editing, just uh, I use uh, shift B. It doesn't always work. It's, it's kind of alias for NeoVim. So you can use regex in Vim. <clears throat> so uh, you can use regex tags to go to the beginning and the end with a dollar, I think. Yeah, so you can use those. It's not really comfortable. You can map what I'm doing, <clears throat> but I use uh, shift B and shift E to jump between the beginning and the end of the line. These are aliases, right? You need to configure it. It's not something. So I the think they're already defaults in NeoVim. And if you're using any other, uh, I don't know, Vim flavor, you probably have to alias them. Yeah. Okay, so now you're in the beginning of the line and I want you to jump to A, what would you do? You know, to the character A, what would you do? So I'm not good in thinking about A is the beginning of the next word. I just hear A and I know it's a capital A. I'll do find. I'll do F Okay, for so find jump to the next word. A. Right, okay. So jump to the next word. You would say hit on W. So yeah, next word is W. It's the beginning of the next word. And jumping back to the, you know. And the back is just B, backwards. Okay, so it's W and B. These are the opposites. Yeah. And if you want to jump to the end of the current word, it's E. If I want to jump to the end of the current word, is E, correct. Okay. Good enough. Yes. Um, okay, let's see what else we got here. Okay. So if we want to do, ah, I already did the find the closest character. We already did that. Well, what about the right. se semicolon that I can see here? Oh, just another thing. Yeah, so it goes along with that. So find is a very useful thing to use when you're inside a line and you want to find a specific characters. So right now we're editing basic text. It's, it's markdown, but it's text. When you're using code, you have all kinds of um, special characters. I want to find, I don't know, tags or dollar signs or whatever you use, whatever. Uh, programming language you use. So F and then the character you want to find is really useful and it works backwards backwards too. So shift F would search backwards. So, so show us, show us. Go to, go to the yeah. serverless best practices, you know, the following two Right, lines. that's two lines And then below, search yeah. for the closed brackets or slash. Right, so my next closing bracket would be here. I search, I, f I used find in the next bracket. And, or semi and the colon? Hyphen. Semicolon. No, we don't, yeah, a colon. Yeah. Okay, so if you want to search backwards, would you do? Would it be like Shift F and then the character? Right. So Shift F and the same closing bracket is here. I accidentally hit another one. So yeah, and 
having the next find, let's say I want to um, find the letter A, okay, the next character A. So I do find A. Oops. Yeah. So <clears throat> when I found it and I want to find another A, I don't have to use find A again. I have the semicolon to jump around, uh... right? That takes me between the A's. And if I search backwards, so find A, and I use the semicolon again, it takes me backwards to the next finding. So that's really useful too. Uh, not, not many people know or use that. I've seen a lot of videos where people have no idea it even exists. But if you really want to follow the least keystrokes thing, so semicolon is really useful if you're using the find method. Okay, so F to find, say it searches for the next character or, but yeah. it, it always, like it's gotta be the next character. You can't find anything then, else more than a character. Right, it is the next character. If you want to search for an actual word, like I want to find build here, mm -hmm. I usually won't just find B because the chances ah. are, if, I've hit it now, but chances are if I'm editing text, there are a lot of B beside, yeah, like yeah. in the middle. And I, I'm not going to scan the line with my eyes and find it. So I'm just going to search for build and just okay. go there. So yeah. usually it's for code. If you want to search for a specific character, it's for links, for so code. It's, I wouldn't say it's specifically for code, but it would sure be more useful in code. Yeah, because if you're writing, for example, I don't know, TypeScript, so you'll have something like that, and it'll be like some kind of variable. And so searching for backwards for dollar actually makes sense, right? Or, or jumping between the bars would be just finding dollar and then just jumping around between your different variables. That's also useful. Um, okay, so I think we are covering all of the find stuff, you know, the find forward, find back. So we already covered that. Yeah. Um, I also see here something which with, um, you know, a percent and then S. What is that? Take doc as input. This is what I wrote down. Where again? Not following. It's a. Uh, I saw something like a percent and then F, something like that. Percent and an F. Am I supposed to see it here in the document? No, 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 no. I mean in Vim. You know there is some command which is called. Oh, a... you mean search and replace? Yeah. Ah. Okay. 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 Yeah. So yeah, uh, percent is used for many things. Percent is basically this document. That's kind of a, an alias or a pointer, whatever. So. If I want to search and replace in Vim, right now, I mean, I'm, highlight I'm highlighted on build. So let's use that. So if I want to search all build occurrences and change them to my name, Omer. Good, so good, good. So I'll yeah. use colon, which opens the command in Vim. You can see uh, my mode changed to command. And now I can give Vim command. So I want to search and replace. So that would be the entire document. Um, and then use S. And then give it some kind of um, like a sed command from Unix. So I would use a separator and I want to switch build with my name, for example. And then end it with a G, which is global. And I would show in a second how Vim can actually ask me of each occurrence whether you should replace it or not. But for now, let's just use the, the basics. And now it changed every occurrence of build to my name, Omer. So if I search for it, I can see that it happened. Contains the script it, for Omering. Love it. Yeah, really, <laughs> really useful. <laughs> so okay. uh, I used um, I used U to undo my changes. I don't know where it was, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's say that I don't want to replace every occurrence. Wait, sh show us again. You did undo and redo. So show it again. Yeah. So. Uh, redo is control R. Redo and now you can see Omer is back here instead of build. Okay. And undo. Good. That's it back. And by the way, if I would want to go back to the command that I used before for search and replace, which is useful if you want to do a lot of search and replaces, I would go back to colon and then use the arrow up, which would take me like Unix to the last command. And mm. you can actually say, search here through your last commands. So that's really useful too. Um, so what I wanted to show here is adding a C and C, not sure what's the alias here, but it would ask you with each replacement. So if I use that, you can see it asks me. So right now I'm highlighted and it asks me, should I replace it with Omer? So let's go with yes, it replaced. 
Should I replace again? Yes, it replaced. Should I replace this one? No. And I can just cut it uh, with Control C and use undo to undo all the changes. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's very good. Um, okay, so more, more text manipulation. Okay, let's keep it on that. Right. I say I want to delete. Okay, so let's say if you go to the word uh, includes in the current line that you are. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And what I, want, I just want you to delete the current word, you know, just delete the includes. Okay, so deleting Vim, like Vim doesn't really have delete, like we talked earlier. It's kind of a cut. You can address it as delete because it's really the, the word or whatever you're searching would be this, it would be gone. But it would be saved into this unnamed register, which basically means next time you use your clipboard, unless you said something else to Vim, uh, you'd be able to uh, restore the word. Anyway, if we want to delete word as easy as it sounds, DW, delete word, okay? Um, the caveat here is if we were um, on include, I would use an alias to disable the highlight for a sec. So let's say I'm on the L in includes and I use delete word, it would not delete the word. It would delete from where I am in the word to the end of it, including the space. That's not really good for us. So if you want to delete a word, and that's usually the case, we're not really on the, um, on the first character, we can do that like B and then delete word. Uh, but in terms of thinking, that's kind of hard for me. So I'm used to delete in word. So I'm in the word and I want to delete everything that's inside it, whatever wrapped in it. So I would use delete in word, okay, D-I-W. And that goes for anything else other than D. If it would be C for starting to edit or uh, I don't know, anything you can think of. So delete in Word. Um, one thing that's important to note, usually we don't edit text, we edit code. Um, so if this word would be wrapped in something um, dollar and then I don't know, includes. Let's say that, um, yeah. Let's say that that's the word, okay, and a space. And let's make it, um, yeah. Okay, so right now if I delete include, if I do delete in word, it actually deletes the word inside the variable. But usually that's not the case. I would actually want to delete it with the entire wrappers, right, with the brackets and with the dollar. So Vim provides something that's called um, a capital W, which is a big word which basically means every character in between the two spaces that wraps it. It's not the word itself, it's everything that's wrapped in the spaces. So if I delete in capital word, that would actually delete everything. And that's usually more useful when you're editing code. Um, if I delete word here, for example, standing on the dollar, the word is just is considered dollar and, um, and the opening curly bracket not including the include text, which is actually another word. So if I want to delete everything, it would be D and shift W. I hope that makes sense. So I like the D, you know, and then the big W, because you know, if for text editing, eventually if I just want to get rid. So go to the C character, just to make sure I understand. Go to the yeah, C. By the way, a good example would be the Docker run here, right? Um, if I delete a word, Actually, that's not a good example. Oh, it, it is because it deletes everything in between the brackets. And if you do it with the double D and capital W, it will delete also the brackets, right? Yeah. So if I delete the word that oh, deletes wow. everything forward because I'm inside the brackets, but if I delete inwards, it deletes. Oh, sorry. Back. I was here. Delete in word that deletes everything in between the spaces, right? Mm. From the Docker run till yeah. the end. Uh, by the way, if I want to jump to the next space, that works too, right? Find space. That's ah, also useful. Find space sounds useful, yeah. Okay. Yes, it's very useful because usually when you're editing code, you can have like a long line of, for example, this and markdown. And you want to find where it ends. So you can search for the closing uh, uh, parentheses or you can just find the space. Okay. And now, wait, I wanted you to get back to where we were in the includes, you know, yeah. in the include. 
Okay, just, just to make sure I understand. Okay, so if you jump to the C character, okay, just go, you know, to right. C character. They include, right. yeah, yeah. And okay. if you do here D W, what happens? So D W would delete from here to, to the, the next brackets, not including. D W, yeah, exactly. In, okay. In the word. So now word undo, here, and if you do D D, okay. So let's try it all. Okay. So DW from from the from C until the brackets not including. Now D right, D capital W. D capital W deletes everything that's included between the spaces, including the space. Ooh, wow. So that would delete if I'll find the next space. That would delete until here, including this one. That's not really useful in yeah, that sense. Yeah, not really useful. Unless unless you have something that should actually be concatenated. Right. Ah. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's actually happens a lot in code. Sometimes you have something here because you pasted, copied, whatever, and you want to concatenate two things. So it may be it may be useful to uh, yeah. You want to make it like uh, ins dependencies for some reason because this is how your code. So it makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And now if you do delete in Word everything lowercase, so the I so delete in Word would actually delete include. Okay. Now makes undo. Sense. And if I word. do delete in capital W. Deleting the entire thing that would actually remove the entire thing. Okay, so deleting capital W is the mo is the thing that I think I'll use most. You know, if I just want to get rid of a word instead of double clicking um, with my mouse it or I don't actually know. depends a lot what you're editing. I find myself actually deleting, for example, in TypeScript, I have kind of text and, and some I don't know variables in the middle and then some text afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I don't always, for example, I want to replace something here. So I, I would actually delete just the string itself and not the entire thing because I want to replace the, I don't know, maybe the variable name. Okay. So it depends. Yeah, I'm just talking about, you know, more text editing, you know, like, uh, like you're doing in here. Yeah. Or like a configuration file or whatever. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so we covered that. What about selecting the current word? Okay, selecting a word. So let's talk a little bit about selecting. So selecting is kind of like we know it from other text editors. It's basically marking something. So we have in Vim a visual mode. If I click V, uh, if I hit V, so I'm in kind of a, you know, it can just go back and forth, uh, moving around and, and marking something. And when I have my, I don't know, define text, I can do th stuff with it, like delete, right, or undo, and I want to, by the way, I can use the moving around with words, right, I want to mark the word here, and to the end of the next one, to the end of the next one, and I want to yank that, so I would, um, Y, and now if I want to paste it around, I would just go up and paste what I've yanked, for example, so that's V, and we have Shift V, which is visual, but it would take the entire line. So wherever I am in the line, and I would use Shift V, I'm now I'm now marking the entire thing. So I can just delete it or yank it or I don't know whatever you want to do with it. So that's really useful too. That's V. And one more cool thing about Vim is using a visual block. So if I go, let's see. 27 lines down and I'll you can ZZ to center your screen around the line um, so let's say I want to remove code like remove this thing and I have 10 lines okay let's do it let's actually create 10 lines of it um, let's copy that and let's try this okay so what I did here, I copied the line and then I pasted it 10 times. How do you copy I, want... I saw you put, you click, you hit like on, on Y. Yeah, so YY is yanking the uh, the line, the entire line. And mm -hmm. then I just paste it. Okay, okay, okay. So let's say sometimes we do have this in configuration file and want to remove the first word or the first or prefix or whatever inside. And if I want to remove code, I have a lot of options actually to remove code here from like all the lines um, but the easiest one would be to use a visual block which is control v right and then you can see v block and then i can mark this and just go down it's normal movement so let's keep 10 down 
And now I'm marking a visual block that's uh, in the entire code like list. And now and I can you hit it. on D and yeah. yeah. And it's gone. And now you also want to remove the, the slash. So how would you do it? The same? Yeah, so slash would be the same. I would actually uh, control V, go down whatever it is, 12 lines and remove it. Um, so that's cool too. Wow. Now we haven't talked about I uh, or A, which um, shift A is really useful for starting to edit at the end of a line uh, and just um, small a, which is starting to edit after the next word, kind of like I, but after my cursor. So if I use I, I'm, I'm on S now in master. If I use I, I'm starting to write um, to the left of it, which is sometimes unnatural to people. So A would be starting to write next to it, like the next character. Um, why is that useful in the context of a visual block? Let's say, for example, um, Let's go to this. And I want to prefix everything here, um, like all the lines here. I want to prefix them with a, I don't know, percent. OK, so a cool thing to do would be to use Shift I, which we talked about A and I in the middle of the word. And then capital A takes me to the end of the line starting to edit. Capital I does it in, the, um, in reverse. What do I mean here? So if I'm using. If I'm in the middle of the line here and I use capital A, I go starting to edit in the end of it. But if I use capital I, I'm starting to edit on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. Here. Why is it useful in this context? So let's go here and mark this. And now I want to prefix that with an ampersand. So I would use shift I on the visual block. And I would put the percent. And then just escape back to normal mode, and it's all prefixed. No, 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 too fast again. <laughs> all right. So prefixing all the lines. Um, visual block, marking everything you want. I go 12 lines down. I'm starting to edit in the beginning. Now, I'm, I'm already on a visual block. So using Shift I would mean start edit at the beginning of this visual block. So. It, it doesn't matter if I'm on the slashes, right? It can go mm -hmm. all this. OK. So Shift I, it lets me edit something. Let's write Omer, my name here. When I exit it, it just does that on the entire visual block. On the entire visual block that was marked earlier. Oh. Right. That's very, very, very useful when you edit big chunks of code or, or configuration blocks and you want to prefix them. Um, it's really useful and it's really hard to achieve with other uh, editors. You'd probably do it 12 times. Yeah. That's what you can do. Probably yeah. how I did so far today. Yeah. Uh, so, another, really so you did the select line. What about the change in word or change word? I don't know. I can see here. Right. Also okay. That so down. let's talk about change. So we talked about all everything except change. So change is, um, is basically C command. And change in word would mean delete, change the word, right? Delete the word, but put me in, it's not like delete word because that leaves me in normal mode. I want to change the word, which means delete it, but let me edit it. So instead of using D, I'll use C. So change word, um, the word services is gone, and I can start writing stuff here. So that's a cool thing to use. So that saves you like one keystroke instead of doing like, uh, D W I, exactly. you do C W. And I right. want to stress it again. It's not that it saves one keystroke in this specific instance. It saves thousands of keystrokes throughout my work, which basically let me keep my, my thoughts and the process of work, which is it, it accumulates, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And you mentioned like we have delete inward. And the same thing goes for changing words. So if I change word here, it changes only forward, which is not really good. Usually not what I want. It is sometimes, but usually not. So if I'm in the middle of the word, I would change in word. And of course, another option is to go to the beginning of it and then change word, which is the same amount of keystrokes, but kind of less intuitive. So that's why I use that. OK, great. Now just to recap of or maybe just to summarize what we're 
going to do next. So we need to go through, what else we got? We need to go through the dot command, which is repeat the last action, and, we, and we'll do that. Okay. We need to, wait, 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 hold, hold on, hold on. Before you start, I just wanna, so you need to show us the dot command, you need to show us the ZZ, how you center your screen. Hold on, I'll tell you what else I wanna, I wanna look at. Ah, show line numbers, I also wanna see. And hold on. And the X, which is like the delete key, and shift X, which is the backspace. So this is what we're going to cover, okay? It's gonna be okay. dot, and there, hold on, hold on, no more, wait. One. And the up next, we're also going to go over all of the copy pasting, you know, what you saw with us earlier, but more, I don't know, we're gonna focus on that, like copy word, copy line, paste word, paste line, paste above, paste below, you know, you showed me that last time, it was great. Okay, yeah, so, so that, guide that's me what we're, and I'll just... we're going to do today. Okay. So guide me through and I'll elaborate wherever I think it's important. Okay, so first of all, let's start with the, let's see, yeah, sh show us the, the easy thing or talk about the easy thing about, I want to see the line numbers, okay? So what do I need to do to see the line numbers? And we'll also make sure it's written down in the description of this uh, video. But how so, do you right, show I'm the line numbers? I'm going to get out of my memory. I don't normally do it because most, I'd say close to 100% of my editing is my, on my own machine. But if you find yourself on a remote server and you want to see numbers, so if I'm not mistaken, then you go to command mode and then set uh, numbers, I think. I and think that it says, was R and U, if I'm not mistaken. So R and U, I think, is related. Ah, so, the relative. Yeah, 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 okay. So what you're currently seeing on my screen is, is a combination of both of them. I see only the line number where I am right now, because that's important to me. But the next lines, I don't want to see their numbers. Because, for example, if I want to go, um, let's say I have this one, right? I have the four line with four. And I want to go to it. I don't want to have um, whatever it is let's say 82 I, I, will, I don't want to compute that like calculate um, 92 minus 82 it's 10 so I need to go 10 up I want to have the relative number so that's really useful so now I know it's 10 lines away and I can just use 10 that's why I use that so that's set NU like set NU would set the numbers and then set RNU would set the relative numbers which are already set on my on my machine and you can do that or in your vmrc file right right yeah okay and um, the other I thing can, we talked about use... center your screen okay never mind yeah <laughs> with you <laughs> i wanted to jump into tabs which are really off topic here and just open my vmrc but that's for another time yeah, yeah, yeah. don't don't kill us so yeah. now i want you to center your screen so let's say you are right where you are and you want to make it in the middle of the screen so what would you do yeah, so ZZ would center my screen, like kind of wrap the screen in, around the line. So let's say I'm editing something here, right? But it's really uncomfortable editing something uh, down below. So I used to, I used to hit ZZ and then center everything around it. But I took it a bit step forward, and in order to move around the screen, which you have a lot of options to. Um, I just mapped control J and control K, K J and K for up and down. I, I added control and mapped it to go 10 lines down or 10 lines up, which of course you can play with 15, 10, whatever, and center. So go down, center, go up, center, which is really, really comfortable for me. That's how I scroll around. Uh, you also have plugins for that, which I, I have installed, but I don't really use. Gives you kind of a more scrolly feel to it. Um, yeah, that's to use ZZ up and down, and ZZ lets you wrap the text around the center line. Excellent. Hold on. What else we got here? Okay, so I also see we talk. We need to talk about the repeat the last insert action. So just not to confuse. Okay, mm -hmm. you talked about colon to repeat the find i think and there's semicolon also semicolon would repeat my last ah, find yeah, se that's semicolon. yeah semicolon to repeat your last find and we also yeah. got here the dot you know you can use the dot yeah so they're not in the same context semicolon is only for find i think mm -hmm. um, but dot is more of a global command which is really useful and it's basically repeat the last thing i did 
a good example for that would be let's search for here. Okay, let's search for all the codex uh, occurrences. And I want to switch this word to something else. For example, my name. I would change the word to Omer and go back to normal mode. Why now, didn't you do change in word because you were at the beginning of the word? Yes, I was already on the first card. Okay, okay. And I'm already wired to do it. It's not something I think about, actually. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the next occurrence of code would be go to N, and that's the next one. And now I want to do, again, the same edit. So I can change word and write Omar, but I already have, have it saved in kind of a register. So my last command is already in Vim. So if I use dot, it does the same thing. Okay, and again, and again, and again, and again. And if you hit so, N, jumps to the next code, right? N, jump to the next one. So that's a really useful mm. thing to do. N dot, N dot, N dot is something. Ah, and you can it. skip it. So if you click, hit on N, and then on N, exactly. right? Exactly. Now, it's not really useful ah. in the context of doing it right now, because it's, this would be useful for a visual block. Mm -hmm. But if I would have it, like, you know, have different kinds of, like, occurrences of code all along the document, would be really useful to jump around and edit. Okay, great. Yeah, it's a good example. Just, and yeah. another thing that I want to see is the delete and backspace keys with the X, you know, I think. Come again? Uh, I see here we wrote down like to to act with the delete key, you know, where it uh, it's like backspace but backwards. So, right, okay, yeah, X. So... I don't, okay, honestly, I don't really use that a lot, both of them, but let's talk about them. So X is basically, we use the delete, right? But if I only use D, nothing happens because it expects me to do something. You can see my cha my cursor kind of changed to an underscore and it expects something, like give me something, tell me a word, a line, a paragraph, whatever. So I give it a word, it has the command and it's, it deletes. Um, but if I want to remove a specific character, like this slash, for example, I would just click X and X deletes. But that's not the normal delete, right? That uh, we talked about the difference between delete and backspace. So that's really delete, delete in space. And the backspace would be shift X. That would delete backwards, right? This is more of a normal modern text editor thing we used to go to the end of the line and start deleting from here backwards, right? So that's the difference between X and shift X. Um, but I usually avoid them, like unless I'm at a single character, which I like a mistaken character that doesn't that weren't supposed to be there, then I'll use the X. But if it's like if you're going this way, you'd probably better off thinking about it for a sec, thinking about how you can delete to where you were, which is actually a good idea to talk about for a sec. So let's say I want to delete. Um, Let's find the ending of master, the wrapper, and I want to delete here, right? From here. Okay. So something I, uh, I love to do. What, what I did was find uh, the closing bracket, right? Mm -hmm. I go back to G. If I want to delete to there, I How can do this. How do you go back? Why do you do, whoa, 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 what? Okay, so found yeah. this one, mm -hmm. and then found backwards G. Ah, okay. I thought you did character. something, some like, uh, okay, something else. Yeah. So uh, I can use find to also delete. So if I want to delete from here to where I were before, I'll delete, find, and then the closing um, parenthesis, and I'm there. Okay. And um, a twist on that would be T, like delete to something. So le let's say I have a colon in the end. See here, find colon. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I want to delete two colon, but not including, I'll go back to my G. I can delete two colon and it deletes everything between me and the colon, but keeps it intact. That's useful. Like delete F colon is including it and delete two colon, not including it. Of course, you can always amend it with an X or something if you made a mistake, but that's actually a good thing to, to use and know. So it's the... Again, just one last time, you can do like D and then the character that you want to delete, including that character, correct? Right. D, D is a wrapping command. I mean, okay, you can so D, 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 D includes, something. okay? D and then the character includes. 
Right. So that would be find and column. Ah, so you do D find colon. Okay. And right. then you undo. undo. And if you, oh, so you can also do it backwards. So you can do shift F, right? Right. Of course. Shift. Yes. So let's, let's uh, delete it, you know, from this uh, G, not mm -hmm. including the G to the yeah. beginning, you know, until the, the first uh, slash of Omer, you know? The first slash of Omer. So that's not really useful for slash because I have two slashes in between. But what I can do is um, I can delete till the O, like find the O. So uh, delete. So do that. Find yeah, sure. O. Do that. Yes. Yeah. So again, that takes again. me do back. Undo, do undo, do undo. I just want to say it one more time. So you jump okay. to the G, F, yeah. G. And and delete then... backwards is just normal delete. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then find backwards, which is shift F. Oh. Okay. So you first start with the D. And what happens if you just, you know, just, if you do it with a capital D, you know, just playing around now? Capital, okay. Capital D is something else. Capital is D, wherever I use it, it says delete from my specific location right now to the end of the line. So capital D, that just deletes everything immediately. Ah, okay. Also wait. a good, uh, okay. Yeah, very useful. And the same thing can be used with C like change from here to the end of the line. So it's the same thing, but you're in insert mode. Okay. Also very useful. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, it looks like we covered a lot of stuff. Just so yeah. now we're just going to move on to the copy paste and that will be the last thing we're going to do. All right. Uh, you know, copy so... paste, copy pasting a word, copy pasting a line and you yeah. know how you showed me with the above and below, you know. Okay, good. So let's talk about, first of all, about creating new lines and then how we copy above and below. So <clears throat> these are all the same. So let's, um, let's remove all of them and keep just one. So <clears throat> if I want to create a new line, I have the O command. O creates a new line below and lets me start editing right away. That's the default of it. Um, if I want to create the same line above where I am, I can obviously go up and use O, or I can use Shift O, which immediately takes me there. And again, least keystrokes. That's 50% of what I did before. So <clears throat> Shift O takes me up, lets me change, kind of change the word, uh, the line above where I were. So I can write stuff here. Right, so that's O and Shift O. Um, and now we talked about pasting. So it wouldn't make a lot of sense if I copy the entire line because it wouldn't show anything. But let's use what I already, what I just deleted. Right, this nothing, this nonsense. So if I use P, it pastes below me. Why is that? Because what I have copied inside my um, the register, which is what you're calling clipboard, is the entire line, like the. Uh, text itself with the break line. So if I paste, it pastes a line, not just the text inside, right? I deleted the line, so I cut the entire line with the break. So you see it deletes the entire line. <clears throat> and if I want to paste it, it pastes after me. If I use Shift-P, it's kind of the difference between O and Shift-O. So P would paste below and Shift-P would paste above. Um, that being said, if you just copy, let's say, a visually mark these, I don't know, few characters and delete them, and I want to paste them here, it would not paste the entire line. It would just paste the characters because I did not cut the line. Okay, when I cut here, line ninety-one is not gone; just a few characters out of it. So when I pasted them here, they were pasted as characters, not as a line. So that's an important distinction to make. Um, okay, so I see here we have the DD, we have the Shift D, we have Paste, Shift Paste, we have co Copy Word is YW, right? I think you showed me. So yes, Yank. You, we copy have the Word. Yeah. Yes, Copy Word. It goes the same as um, the other ones, right? If I'm in the first characters, copy the Yank the word, and then let's uh, if I paste it here. It'll paste after S. So that kind of makes more sense to paste like with a shift P. I uh, have services services. Um, so yeah, 
and yank inward is the same thing as change inward, delete inward. So if I if I would have um, yank word here, it's not the entire word. Yeah, let's paste it here. It's the vices. It's yeah, okay. Vices exactly. So I would yank in word and go up to paste it, and then it's the entire word services. Amazing. And what about yank capital W? And then we'll do a recap about those yanks because it was like too many commands. So it says here copy, copy from w, cursor to the end. Sure. I don't know. What? I, I wrote so down here. Let's see what capital W does. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with it. I don't think it does anything, but there is uh, w, uh, YY, which is uh, yank the entire line. Like DD cuts the entire line. So yank just yanks the entire line. And then when I paste, there's another line of what I want. Okay. Right? And if you do shift P, it would be above. <clears throat> exactly. Shift P is above. You don't see much here because. You know, so just now, just idea. a quick recap. If you want to do it, it's like change word and change in word. You know, CW, CIW. So you can do the same with YW and YIW. Yeah. yeah. If you're more comfortable, you can always just squeeze in the I because it doesn't really matter if you on the beginning of the word. So it's the same, right? The Latin word, it's the same as anything. Mm -hmm. If you're in, if you want to really save this uh, in word, like save the keystroke, so PW, whatever. But that works for everything. D, C, uh, V, also, yeah, V, word, or uh, V in word, same thing. Uh, cool. So, Omar, I think <coughs> we are done. I think we covered everything. Uh, up next, we'll see if we can do another session about, you know, how to really, how, how to work on code, because right now it's a markdown file. So mm -hmm. next time we can take a TypeScript file, or JavaScript file, whatever, and see how we can uh, work on that. And I also like the fact that what you showed about the uh, regular expressions where you can, you know, use the dollar and the, uh, you know, shift six, you know, I don't even know how, like the power sign where you right. can jump to, yeah, power sign jumps to the beginning and dollar right. sign jumps to the end. Just like mm -hmm. regular expression. Any other cool regular expressions you remember? I don't know, like something that we can use. You you, you usually use maybe, except from jumping uh, uh, back and forth. Trying to think, not not anything that comes to mind. Okay. It gets useful when you're trying to delete something. Like if I were to, it's not in the context, but if I were to delete some kind of regex, like delete, let's search for all the lines that have services in them. So uh, <clears throat> I can write a regex here, right? Uh, something uh, that starts with services. What is G? Why are you starting with G? So G is the global, is the entire document. Okay. I think I and thought then, it's supposed to be in the end. No, that's a, that's a different thing. What I'm doing here is not search and replace. It's just uh, it's kind of search and delete. I'm not really sure about the naming of the commands. But okay. let's take the entire document and then search for everything. Because I'm not seeing any syntax sliding, I'm assuming there's nothing like that. But let's search for something that does exist, like replace. Oh, I won't see it. Okay, anything that starts with a replace and then has anything in it, no matter what. So that's a regex. Delete it. Mm -hmm. I delete the lines. So it, Vim tells me now six fewer lines. It's, it has deleted six lines that matched um, there. Now it's highlighted. Everything that starts with replace. Um, that's useful for a lot of logs. Ah, and it deleted the whole line because you did this line, uh, yeah. dot and asterisk. Okay, so yeah. delete everything, including the backslash n in the end of the line. <clears throat> yeah, that basically is a command for deleting lines. So everything that the regex matches on the entire global document, it would just delete. Okay. Okay, that's uh, not in the context, but good to know. No, no, yeah, it was very good to know. Okay, so... By the way, uh, you can see that my alias SS, uh, but the actual thing is no H, that's no highlight. So I think that the opposite is set highlight, which is by default in Vim for me, in my VimRC. Uh, so if I search for something like name, so it's automatically highlighted. I don't think that by default Vim, when you start Vim, it, it's, not the, um, it's not the setting. So you have to set highlight and then set no highlight would uh, do the opposite, disable it. <clears throat> okay. Yeah.
cool. So, okay, so you did the macro for it. And all right, so I think we're done. And it was great, so thank you. Sure. And hopefully we'll do more like that. <laughs> yeah, I recommendation for that. I did write, uh, I had a blog post, which you can find in many places, in our blog and wherever, um, which lists the entire alphabet, the English alphabet, and what they are uh, related to in Vim. A, B, C, D, everything. Almost all of them have some kind of context in Vim. And if you learn it this way, it makes a lot more sense. So that's also a useful read. Okay. Thank you, Omer. Sure. <laughs> Bye, everyone. See you next week.